Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial. I am going to show you guys how to create this really cool caustic effect in Blender. It's really simple. Uh, it can apply to any shape. So let's just go ahead and hop right into it. You guys probably saw my most recent Instagram posts. This was one of them and you guys were really impressed by the quality of this. So I'm going to go over like pretty much every aspect of this, how it's done, like the quality of the image. As you can see, when I zoom in here, um, there is pretty much no quality loss and that's because I rendered such a big image. I think this was, I think it was 1920 by 1920 and then I basically did 200% of that. So yeah, this is a really big image. As you can see, the quality is uh, nothing short of great. And that's because of all the settings I used and the lighting, the materials, and of course the actual image size itself. And I think a lot of people don't understand this about Blender, but when you increase the image size, you're going to get a better quality render. It's just, that's just how it is. If anyone tells you any different, they don't know what they're talking about. So let's go ahead and get right into it. I'm going to go ahead and just save this to my downloads as uh, testing. And this is going to be available on my Patreon testing caustics. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and save that. So again, guys, let's go ahead and get right into this. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna first add in an image plane, or sorry, just a regular plane, scale it up by 10, just make it really big for our scene. And now we can decide what kind of objects we wanna add on here. I'm just gonna start with the cylinder, move it up. I think I'm gonna scale it down just a little bit and I'm gonna rotate it 90 degrees. That was RX90 for those of you wondering that shortcut. Just add a bevel. Um, we're gonna add an edge split and a subdivision surface modifier right click shade auto smooth Object apply scale bring it down Maybe right here just below or above the surface that looks perfect I'm gonna go ahead and save this as I go now I'm also going to give our bevel just a few segments here make that nice and smooth Awesome, and let's go to rendered view we're not gonna be using Eevee, we're gonna be using Cycles for this, our GPU, we're gonna go ahead and enable that. Um, and then we're just going to add in a light source. So I'm gonna go ahead and add in a, a point light. I'm gonna put it right over here. And as you can see, we already have some lighting on our scene. I'm also gonna go ahead and make my world color black. I'm gonna go ahead and click on my cylinder here and I'm gonna give it a brand new shader. I'm gonna choose a glass shader with zero roughness. And for the purposes of this tutorial, I'll make it blue. Now, as you can see, there's no caustics just yet, but the very first thing I'm gonna go is go to my point light. I'm gonna make this 1000, so it's much brighter. Now, there is no caustics currently enabled, so I am gonna show you the difference. Now, in order for this to work really nicely too, just make sure you have this shaded auto smooth. Um, make sure you guys don't miss that step. Uh, very first thing we're gonna need to do is click on our light source. We're gonna have to enable shadow caustics. It's a little setting on the right hand side. Go ahead and click on your object. Go to your, what is it called? Object data properties, yep. And then go to your shading and then click on cast shadow caustics. And then the final step is you need to click on your plane, click on receive shadow caustics. And now as you can see, we have shadow caustics. Now you're probably wondering why it looks so strange. One of the things we're gonna play with is the actual IOR of the glass. Right now it's 1.45. I'm gonna set it to 1.2. And I'm also gonna go ahead and press N to pop up in this tab over here. And I'm just gonna rotate this on the Z axis a little bit. Now, as you guys can see, we have our caustics working nicely. Now, one of the key things to the caustics is the lighting, obviously. So, as you can see, when I move my light source around, it's gonna completely change the way these caustics look. Now, another really important factor here is the actual radius of the light source. So the light source has a zero meters radius. So I'm gonna show you what it looks like with one. So as you can see, completely different effect when we go ahead and raise that radius up. Now I think that somewhere between zero and one is pretty good. So I'm gonna go with something like maybe 0.2. And as you can see, we now have some really, really interesting caustics going on here. So um, another thing to consider is obviously the position of the light. Now it sounds like it makes sense, right? But I'm gonna to go to my top down view here so you guys can see. And as you can see, it does look really cool right now. And as we rotate our object, you can see how the caustics are going to change. Now, the position of the light is obviously also going to change our caustics. However, right now we only have one light source. What would happen if we duplicated this light source? Let's go ahead and find out. I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate it. Now, do you guys notice how now we have multiple light sources shining through our caustic or our caustic object here and the different result that you can get because of that? So this is really, really important. And if you click on the light and you just make the radius zero, 
for both of these. Let me make that zero there. You can notice, now you're going to get a few artifacts because of the geometry of our object, but if you notice, look at what is happening here. Uh, let me go to my object properties. Let me go to my subdivision. I'm going to bump that up to two. And if you guys want, you can mess around with your object more, but basically everything is set up for our caustics. As you guys can see, they look really, really nice. Um, and depending on the actual object that you have, you are going to get some completely different results. Um, now what's really fun about this, we're going to go ahead and look at our radius here. I think I'm going to give each one of these a 0.1 radius. Sometimes it's nice to have a slightly more feathered look to your shadows. I kind of personally like that, um, that look. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to click on our cylinder, duplicate it, rotate it, and I'm going to give it a different color. I'm going to duplicate this glass material and just give this like a yellowish color. And as you can see, we already have some really nice caustic showing up here. Um, this is going to be quite taxing on your computer. Also, someone in the chat asked, are you going to publish this on YouTube? Yes, I am. Um, I did want to just show you guys like how simple it is to create these effects. Now, if you guys go ahead and lower the light sources, you'll notice that we can kind of stretch these caustics out even more. Or if you raise them up, you'll notice how the caustics kind of contain themselves in a more bunched up type of area. And that's just because of the angle of the lighting itself. So I wanted to just mention that. Um, and as you can see, if you zoom in here, you can really see in detail the lights coming through our caustic, um, our caustic shadows here. Now, another thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my light paths and I'm just gonna bump everything up to 20, except for volume. And the total, I'll make that 20 as well. And that should help you guys out a little bit as well. So um, in terms of render settings, let me go ahead and snap to the camera real quick. I'm gonna go ahead and click on my camera. I'm gonna click on viewport display and raise this value right here. So we can really narrow in on our scene here. I'm gonna scale my plane up just a bit. Go to my camera, move it up here just a bit. Maybe point it downwards a little bit. I think that looks good. And then I think I'm gonna actually mess around with the IOR of these just a little bit more. Thank you Trevima.creatives for the badge. I really appreciate that. As usual, you're always supporting my channel. Thank you so much. I'm gonna go ahead and experiment with the value here. So right now I just raised this value to 1.5, the IOR of the yellow glass. And if we click on our blue glass, we can also raise that to 1.5. And you'll see that it looks more natural, more naturally like glass. But if you guys aren't looking for something like that and you want it to be like more transparent, you can go ahead and lower that value. However, I just think this looks really good. Now I'm gonna go back to my solid view real quick. I'm gonna go ahead and select random colors. I am going to now duplicate this again, duplicate the color, and I'm gonna make this one red, or maybe like a pink color, snap back to my camera. Now let's go ahead and see what we got. And just like that, we're back, um, we're back with our really, really cool caustic effects. Now this is really, really simple to create, as you guys can tell. Um, there is a lot of really incredible things that you can do with this effect. As you guys can see, it's looking fantastic. It's gonna be very slow in your viewport, so if you guys don't have a powerful GPU, it might be worth investing in one. Let's go over some render settings. So this is what you guys were really, really curious about. And believe it or not, they're really not that complicated. The very first thing I'm gonna do is make my max samples 1000. Now, you guys can set that to whatever you want, but when you raise the size of your image, you actually need less samples, I find. I'm also gonna use optics denoising. I am going to close all that, and I'm gonna go to my resolution. So right now, we are at 1920 by 1080, which is your standard YouTube thumbnail size. It's your, your classic landscape um, dimension. So I'm gonna go ahead and put 200% where that is, that little window off to the right. The IOR of this glass is 1.5 for those of you asking. Um, another thing we can do, actually someone just suggested it in the chat and I actually surprised I haven't done this already because this will definitely add to our render. Go ahead and click on your camera, enable the depth of field option, and then let's go ahead and select, uh, let's select our blue cylinder and then give ourselves an extremely low f-stop. 
and let's see if that worked and I think it did. Now what that's going to do guys, it's going to allow us to have this really, really sharp depth of field effect. It's kind of hard to tell right now because our viewport is still rendering, but we actually do have that nice blurred effect and if you want, you can turn it down even more. Now be careful, at a certain point it will start to make things like barely visible. Now this looks really cool, but it might be a little bit too intense, so I'm going to go ahead and turn it back up to maybe 0 0.06. Again, you guys can play with this value however you want. We should be good to go and we should be able to render now. I think I might just do one more thing. I'm going to go ahead to solid view. I'm going to duplicate this cylinder, scale it on the X. I'm going to go ahead and apply the scale, rotate it. And then I'm going to make this one, I'm going to give this a new material with zero saturation. So basically we're going to have uh, white caustics on the left here. So let's just go ahead and see if that helped anything. Um, I just wanted to see what that might be able to look like. And again, you guys can rotate this however you want. I thought it would be cool to add a clear piece of glass over here um, just to demonstrate um, what you can play around with. Um, the IOR is 1.5 of the glass and the roughness is zero. Um, the roughness will have an effect on the caustics themselves. I will show you an example. With this blue one right here, roughness is at zero. I'm gonna set it to 0.75, and let's go ahead and take a look, once I press enter, uh, what this could do for the caustics or what it can't do for the caustics. Let's go ahead and give that a quick second. As you can see, we are still getting caustics through our glass object, but they're much more faded. They're not as crisp. So I'm gonna go ahead and undo that. Now that actually does look really, really nice, but I am gonna undo that step um, to show you guys the difference. The main difference, if we zoom, I'm gonna zoom in here and just do that one more time. If we zoom into like the center here where the, the glass meets the floor, and I put this back to 0.75, go ahead and take a quick look. I'm gonna swap it out. This is the difference you're gonna get. Again, it's a much more diffused caustic effect, but it's still clearly there. So if you guys do like that frosted glass look, this is definitely a good option for you if you're looking to get that type of effect on your material. I personally like zero roughness. There, every now and then I will do that frosted glass look, but we're not gonna go ahead and do it for this render. Let me go ahead and go back to solid view, and let's go ahead and double check our render settings. Everything looks good there. I think I'm gonna go ahead and render this and see how long it takes. Now, this might take a minute and I might have to come back. Um, it's saying it's gonna take about 40 minutes. I don't think it actually will. Now, we are at a thousand samples here, so let me go ahead and X out of this. Let me cancel this render real quick. And let me go back to my render settings. Now, instead of a thousand samples, I'm gonna do 150. Let's go ahead and see how long it'll take now. Now, I'm doing 200% of the 1920 by 1080. So basically, whatever those dimensions are, you multiply both of them by two, and that is the end result that you're gonna get. This is saying it's gonna take about five minutes. Now, I will be including this as the thumbnail of the video, so you guys don't have to worry about that if you don't wanna stick around and wait for it. Um, but I did wanna show you guys how to do this because a lot of you guys were asking me, Kenny, how do you get those really crisp um, caustic effects. One of the ways you do it is you have to have really good lighting set up, you have to have good geometry on your objects, and then of course you have to enable caustics. If you don't enable caustics, you're not going to have caustics. So that's pretty much it, guys. Um, that pretty much covers the full tutorial on how to do this kind of caustic effect. Um, if you guys are really looking to push your renders to the next level, I highly suggest you render them at a larger dimension. I think a lot of people aren't patient enough to do that. If you guys have the time, it is 100% worth it. Let me go ahead and pull up that example one more time because I wanna show you what, um, what this is capable of. Let me scroll down and find it. There it is right there. Um, okay, so there's the dimensions of that image. So this image is 3840 by 3840. Now, of course, I had multiple light sources for this particular render. So if you look, you can kind of tell. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. I probably had six or so. If you look at the lines within the glass, you can kind of tell how many shadows there are. In other words, how many light sources are causing those shadows. Um, this file I have to dig up. Um, it, it came out really, really nicely. I think I also applied all of the modifiers to the cylinders, but again, it just, it came out so beautiful that 
I had to cover it into in a tutorial. I also had to share it with you guys. I almost didn't share this image on Instagram. I forget why, um, because it really is a gorgeous render. So I want to make sure you guys are confident with your caustic skills. I really want you guys to try this out. Um, you'll get a greater appreciation for render times as well. Even on my computer, and I'm running the 3070 Ti, uh, which is a very powerful graphics card. Um, it's not the best. The best right now, I think, is the 4090. But again, this took a while. Let's go ahead and check on our render. It says it's going to take about another 2 minutes and 30 seconds. Now, you guys might be thinking this is really fast, but for me, I'm, I'm used to sub 5 seconds per frame. So this is actually quite slow for me. I usually don't work with caustics, but they are quite beautiful. So I had to share this tutorial with you guys. Um, it just came out fantastically. Um, again, if you guys don't want to exaggerate these colors, you can always edit them in post-production, or you can just mess around with your compositing or your color management within Blender if you really don't want to get into that stuff. Um, or, of course, the actual material itself, you can adjust the coloration and the saturation within Blender's um, shader editor as well. So you have a lot of options in terms of your look of your materials. Again, you guys can pretty much do whatever you want. The main part of this tutorial was just showing you how to make caustics work in Blender, kind of how to enable those settings, and then, of course, my render settings as well. Um, it's pretty cool what you can achieve. Like, even if you just look at this point right here, imagine if we had a more complicated object that we had um, enabled these caustics on, kind of the effects that you can achieve here. And again, this right here, and yes, this is Cycles for those of you asking. This right here was just such a great example, so I had to upload that. Especially on the left-hand side, you guys can see where those, those pink caustics are coming through. Those lines just look so good. Um, I had to show it off. So, yeah, this is, um, man, it's just so glossy. It just looks so good. Again, I'm not using an HDRI. I don't believe I am. You guys can use an HDRI if you want to. In fact, if you do add an HDRI, you can just turn the value down. So the actual strength of the light coming from the HDRI, you can turn that down. And then what you'll be able to do is get some very subtle reflections on the glass. So if you're looking to get more detail in that glass, more reflection, it is possible. Um, and then you can start overlapping these colors and really playing around with different designs. Um, but I wanted to mention that because it is a simple lighting setup, but you can take it a step further if you really want to. It's really up to you guys what you choose to do with your renders and your own creative limits. Um, whatever you can think of, at this point you know how to set up your caustics and blender in cycles, and there's really no excuse not to have something like this. I pretty much just showed you exactly how to create this. Now, what I just showed you has two light sources. This one has like six. Um, this took quite a quite a while to render. If I remember, it was like 40 minutes or so. Um, it's a very big image. So let's go back and see if our other render is complete. We're about 27 seconds off from this being done. I will go ahead and wait this out. And then we'll review the final render. Now, if you zoom in here, you'll notice some noise. And that's totally okay. The denoiser should get rid of that. But if you guys don't like that, okay, there's your completed render. If you don't like it and it still doesn't look good in your eyes, you can 100% raise the sample count. Um, I am noticing some noise in the background here. Now, when you enable depth of field, you're definitely taking that chance of getting these noisy artifacts like this. But again, when this image is, is uh, squeezed down onto an Instagram square, you're probably not going to notice. But with that being said, guys, that is the YouTube tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you got some value out of this. Um, I can keep doing these types of tutorials if you guys enjoy them. Uh, I definitely have been slacking a little bit on the tutorial side of things. I just had a few other things going on, but I'm so happy that I was able to hop back on here and show you guys this. All right, guys, have a fantastic day.